Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, second webinar. Uh, this time it is a deep dive. I will explain within a, a, a minute what that means. Um, so this is all part of an initiative that we took uh, at Densu and Isobar, which is the Brand Recovery Series. And it's a, an attempt um, to gather information, insights, uh, and thoughts on uh, this crisis and how brands can uh, recover from it. I invite you to go check it out. It's brandrecoveryseries.com. Uh, you'll find, as I said, articles, uh, webinars, recording of webinars, and uh, interviews with uh, thought leaders. The first interview we have published is with Orlando Wood. Um, I will come back to that later. Um, Peter Field, an interview with Peter Field will be published um, next week. Uh, okay, so um, this, um, sorry, this webinar is a deep dive because the, the first webinar, the part one, there we talked about what to do in times of social distancing. And we, there we touched up on uh, the notion of doing good. And so, uh, what we're going to do now is go into a deep dive of that notion, uh, how brands are doing good and uh, is doing good the only strategy today, are there any other strategies, etc. Um, I'm not going to go into details of what leading brands are doing um, on the uh, on the branddiscoveryseries.com. You'll find uh, a presentation uh the example of leading brands which is a list of uh plus 30 examples of what brands are doing and you'll also find an excel sheet um that is a list of 200 examples of what companies and ngos are doing uh internationally so how uh so basically 230 examples of what companies ngos and brands are doing uh during this crisis to help uh, solve this crisis uh, that we, you will see as of three o'clock this will be on uh, the website okay uh, let me start with the five for us the five critical uh, takeaways the first one is um, consumers want you to step in and this is very new this is the first time that consumers are asking companies actively to stop to step in uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, responding to that request from consumers is, you know, it, 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 it means keeping your mental availability up. We'll explain later on why that is so extremely important. And strengthening your social license to operate. Within a few slides, I will explain what that means. Um, either way, mental availability or social license to operate, it will influence your sales in the post-COVID-19 recession uh, positively um, and there's plenty of proof for that so um, although the title of this deep dive was about doing good doing good is not the only smart strategy that you can have today um, and if we go back to you know uh, being silent or going dark well um, that is I'm going to show it to you perhaps the less smart strategy to do today because uh, we're going to touch upon how long this crisis will take more and more information is available and we're in it for six months or longer and no brand can stay silent for six months it's simply not possible so um these are the five things we're going to discuss we're going to start with consumers are asking you to step in as i said this is the first time that this happens, and this has political and economical uh, reasons. Um, first of all, the political reasons. If you look at uh, this slide, then you see, if you look at the, at, the, at the figure, Germany, France, Italy, and the UK, and what you see the, here, um, that in Germany, 62% of people are saying, um, you know who do i trust to effectively lead the efforts in my country to combat the coronavirus well it is governments and business together 
Same in Italy, 54%, same in France, same in the UK. The reason for that is that in Western Europe, um, people want companies to come in because they don't trust governments to do it alone. They, they don't trust governments to solve this alone. And also, uh, they fear that this crisis will be used for political, political gain. Now, it's very cynical that, um, if I say political gain, that this morning in the New York Times, you know, there was this call from the chief of the WHO to world leaders saying, please do not politicize this virus because it will lead to many more uh, body bags. So the people are right that in their fear of, you know, that politicians might use this crisis for political gain. Now, this is the political part. There's also a economical part. And uh, not many people will know the numbers, but everybody feels it. Um, companies have much more power, much more decision-making uh, power, much more money than, than, than countries. So they can, and they can move, move faster if they want to. If we look at the world's 100 large, largest economic entities, then you see that se almost 70% of that top 100 are companies and only 30% are, country, are countries. So um, it, it shows that the companies have a, a lot of potential for either positive or negative impact. Um, and everybody understands that you know, they have the firepower, they have the decision power, they have the money. And, and the last two years, um, a lot of pressure is on companies to you know to actively actively go for positive impact two examples of that the first example is the sustainable development goals the world community is is putting pressure on companies to help achieve them and the other one and maybe for businesses this is you know more stressful investors are looking beyond financial metrics to decide uh, to invest in this country, uh, this uh, this company or another, and the other, the, the 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 more than financial metrics. What are the other metrics? Um, you'll hear about it. Is ESG, the uh, environmental, social, and governance. And so, basically, governance. It's basically the uh, impact that companies have on environment, on social, and on governance. And so uh, a lot more investors today are looking at those metrics too, together with the financial metrics, to decide to invest or not. So there's a, um, there's a sort of a, a, a political reason why people want brands in. There's also an economical reason why people uh, want brands in. Um, and there's also a sort of larger trend because it's not because we have this crisis that all of a sudden people want companies in um it it's a trend for the last you know the start of this century where um people want brands to help deliver a better society if you look at the left side then you see 51 percent, so more than half in in 2017 in us uk brazil china france germany italy and japan more than half of of the people uh, said we expect brands to take a larger role in society in 2019, that was already 65%. So it is not only today, it's not because of this crisis that people ask uh, companies to step in. Um, it's just because now it's very necessary. Now, um, and if we take an even larger look, then um, this is the third phase in marketing. We started marketing, product marketing in the 1900s. Where, um, where we you know, sold new products, we advertised new products, products that were new to people, you know, uh, washing machines, uh, hair dryers, cars, hair dryers, that's a funny example because in the beginning of when people's uh, companies start selling hair dryers, people were afraid that it would burn their hair. So the, the first ads had to explain that you know, a hair dryer was completely safe and it would not burn their hair. Um, now, the focus of advertising in this era was, of course, on the USP. It was explaining what a product would do. Then in the 80s, when we had, you know, for the people with a little bit of gray hair, when we had the UPs and phrases uh, such as uh, greed is good, 
it was all about lifestyle and products became or brands became tickets to a certain lifestyle and and if you could afford that brand then you were part of the lifestyle and since this century we're into this sustainability marketing marketing where consumers understand that some global and local problems are way too big for governments that partisan politics you know are deadlocking national governments to effectively address those bigger global and local problems and so they turn to big brands because they have more power more budget and stronger leadership so, and this is the third phase of, of uh, marketing. Now, uh, Zoe Chang, which is head of growth, she is head of growth of Cosmia China. She said, no, you know, if, if, if you had the choice, so people ask you to step in, you have the, the choice to stay silent, but you know, the, the far better strategy is responding to that and showing uh, empathy. Um, and, this is why I want to I want to talk about the the license to operate because showing empathy and doing good today will strengthen your license your social license to operate. Now, what is it and why is that important? Well, your social license to operate. If you look at the slide at the bottom, the social license to operate is uh, the stakeholders' perception of the uh, acceptability of a company and its operations. So companies have different stakeholders, investors, consumers, the local community, employees, suppliers, governments. And not all companies are aware of their uh, social license to operate because there's no problem. The social license, you, you know that you're losing, that your social license to operate is important when you start losing it. And that is uh, Tim Egger, the chairman of UK's Oil and Gas, uh, gave this speech in the beginning of this year when he said to the industry, he said, you know, the growing public awareness about climate change is putting our industry's social license to operate at stake. If your social license to operate is at stake, then all, all of a sudden governments will, you know, will, uh, will decide on new laws to make it, that makes it, more difficult because they don't like the way you operate. Consumers will uh, stop um, buying your products and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the oil and gas are a little bit in, 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 in trouble, but on the other hand, companies like Nike know that too. They, are, they have a real socialized to operate strategy and um, that allows them to take decisions as the, the decision that they took on March 16, where they closed all the 384 retail stores in the US, but decided to continue to pay their uh, store employees. That is, of course, strengthening your license to operate. And I wanna talk about this uh, um, social license to operate because this is a really good time to strengthen it. Because the social license to operate is built upon a notion of uh, legitimacy and a notion of trust. Um, and there's a sort of economical uh, legitimacy. That's the perception that the company offers a benefit to all stakeholders, not just themselves. It's a little bit the shareholder, stakeholder deba debate that we have for the moment. There's also this socio-political legitimacy where um, you companies need to have that perception that they contribute to the well-being of the community, of the, of the local way of life. Uh, the thinking is, you know, from consumers is, you know, we made you rich, now you have to pay back. The international trust is a perception that the company listens and responds and keeps the promises. And institutionalized trust is the perception that there is a, a relationship between stakeholders and the company and that that relationship is based on each other's interest. Now, um, why is this a good time to look at your own social uh, license to operate uh, and, and see how you can build or how, how you can strengthen your le uh, legitimacy and your trust, it's because uh, consumers are asking, are asking for it. If, if, if you ask consumers today what they expect companies to do, and then the, the first thing is to worry about their employees' health and, and sanitizing workplaces. Uh, you know, the second thing is, 
favor flexible working, have plans in place to protect the supply of services and products to consumers, make donations, make themselves available to the government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, note that only the last, uh, at the bottom you see stop advertising, less than 10% of the people are saying, well, you have to stop advertising. So if you, if you want to build your uh, social political legitimacy and your, your trust, then this is a good time and, and this is the list of uh, things that consumers want you to do. Um, within a few slides, I will say that I will show you that this the doing good strategy is really is a good strategy, but it's not the only one. Um, so um, if we go back to um, you know consumers as are asking brands to step in, brands of course can go dark and stay silent. Now. Remaining some brands remain silent because they are afraid of saying the wrong thing and harm their uh, social license to operate. Well, this is not the best strategy uh, to proceed today because it is very clear what consumers uh, want you to uh, talk about. Uh, this is a, a piece of research from Kantar and it says this is how and what consumers think you should communicate about. Uh, the first thing is 77% said should talk about how they could be helpful in the new everyday life. So they're asking you to step in and they're asking you to talk of, to, 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 you know, show it, don't tell. They ask you to talk about it. Second, 75% says should inform about their efforts to face the situation. What you shouldn't do is should not exploit the coronavirus situation to promote the brand. So that's the thin line, the ethical line that you don't want to cross. And then, um, so the purple ones, I think, are more about now, about this phase, the phase of how are we going to handle the, 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 the crisis. The green ones is, in my opinion, for the next phase. Once we've managed the crisis, and once the restrictions, you know, our people, the government is going to loosen up the restrictions, then we're gonna go into a, a second phase a second phase, a recession, you know, the unemployment, where um, the question of the consumer is more make me feel good, make me forget a little bit, all my worries make me feel good. And then 70% says, you know, if, if you talk, you should use a reassuring tone. 65% says you should offer a positive perspective. It's that feel, feel good, uh, you know, that feel good advertising or that feel good communication that people want from us. Um, uh, the 54 should talk about brands like they have always done, and then 50 should talk about their own brand in a carefree and light way. We'll come back uh, to, to the green ones. We'll come, we will come back at the end. Um, let's talk about the purple ones. Uh, t should talk about what uh, brands are doing and should inform about their efforts. This is, of course, we've done it here in Belgium too, but this is a wonderful example of something that gives you a lot of legitimacy and a lot of trust. Uh, prior to, prior to, prior to of for the elderly of, of for one hour, uh, as I said, we've done it here too. Um, and then a bad example is Richard Branson, who is always saying, take care of your employees and they will take care of your business. It's as simple as that. And then, you know, the uh, uh, Branson said uh, for Virgin Atlantic, suggested that staff would take eight weeks unpaid leave during the pandemic. And so that was has been uh, widely criticized and Branson lost a bit of his uh, legitimacy and a lot of trust. Um, and and as the Financial Times says, uh, in years to come, businesses will be asked what action they took during this uh, pandemic. Because it's the first time that this re happens. We never had that before. It's a, a psychological, it's an economical, and it's a health crisis. So it is important. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a period, even if you're silent or if you're not silent, we are building mental constructs for brands. And uh, we, we are building uh, trust and we are building the legitimacy. So um, knowing that, that whatever we do now will be remembered for a long time, I think it's, it's really important to, to, to check 
how strong your brand's license to operate is and if you uh, can strengthen it in this period of uh, the crisis. Now, why? let's talk about money. Why will this influence your sales in the post-COVID-19 uh, crisis? Um, I'm going to go a little bit in uh, neuropsychology. Um, I can't see your faces. I hope you're not falling asleep now. Um, but um, Daniel Kahneman, which is a Nobel Prize winner, did 40 years of research on how um, we are uh, deciding, how we make decisions, and also how we make decisions on brands. And he found that 90% of all the decisions that we make, we make on autopilot. Then we don't rationally think about decisions, we just make them based on our gut feeling and our emotions. Now, um, we know that uh, if the, the autopilot, although I just said that people don't think, the autopilot is thinking a little bit, really, really fast, and he's, he's using three shortcuts to decide on a brand. So if the question is, I need a, a product or a, a, or, a, or a service, you know, which brand I'm going to buy it from, uh, there's three shortcuts. There's the availability heuristic, the effect heuristic, and the processing fluency heuristic. Now, the availability, that's your mental availability. That's, uh, uh, I'm going to buy a new car. Immediately, you have a list of three, four brands, car brands, on your list. That's, is your brand mental available or not? The second thing that happens is uh, much more emotional. It's, how does that brand makes me feel? And if that brand makes you, makes you feel bad, then the brand is off the list. So you can, you can be on the list for you know, in the first step being mental available, but if people don't like you, then you're off the list. And the third one, processing fluency, is how people understand that you are different uh, from your competitors. So, so the best thing that can happen to you is as a brand, you are available, people like what you do, and people understand really well why you are different from uh, the competition. And if that works, and if you score high on those three metrics, what happens is uh, it will build your market share because there's a strong correlation between those three metrics and market share. The, across, the, across industries, the correlation is 0.85. So um, these are three very important metrics, uh, fame, feeling, and fluency, the three Fs, uh, that we need to take into account. And of course, if I link back to uh, social license to operate, that's a lot about the, 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 the trust and the legitimacy is a, is a lot about feeling. Um, and now, um, so before we go into feeling, by the way, all your marketing efforts are driving your scores, uh, your score on these three heuristics. Uh, availability, you know, your metric on availability, it's influenced by SEO, SEA, social engagement, influence, etc. PO, point of sale, distribution, etc. Effect is value perception, user experience, usability, innovation, product development, process influency is design, sound, corporate identity, brand properties, etc. So um, even if you uh, are not aware of it, every day you're working on your fame, feeling, and your fluency. And uh, if we compare the three, fame, feeling, and fluency, then we know that feeling is the most important one because how people feel about a brand predicts a brand's future market share most. It's, 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 it, it, is, it is more important than fluency and it is more important than uh, uh, fame. And then, of course, if you see this, coming back to Tesco, you know that this will help the metric, the feeling metric. Um, and um, I would like to end on this quote for this part. It's Risha Sunak, the, the UK Chancellor, who said when he announced all the, uh, all the programs they would start to, to, um, for this crisis, he said, when this is over, and it will be over, we want to look back at this moment and remember the many small acts of kindness done by us and to us. So, and again, this is saying, you know, whatever happens now, we will remember that for years to come because it's such a big moment. It's such a, it, it's such a big thing that's happening to us. And so um, feeling is perhaps even more important than, than ever. And whatever you can do now to influence your feeling metric 
will eventually uh, in the crisis of after the, the in the recession of after the recession uh, pay back the, the, the efforts that you you do now will uh, pay back in the recession of after the recession so it is really important that you know your three your FFF scores and if you don't then we can help you with that now um, we talked a lot about um, doing good now is doing good the only the only strategy um, because some people or what you hear is you know there's a sort of plateau the doing good plateau if every company does good and every company is taking every opportunity to talk about how they're doing good you know at at a certain time it's going to be like this big yawn of consumers of consumers with this big yawn saying oh my god another company that says they're doing good you know there's a sort of plateau so um there is a limit of doing good news that consumers can take. Um, so it's not the only strategy. It's not the, 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 the only thing you can do. And there's also, I think, the wind of opportunity of doing good is slowly closing because once we are back at work and back at school, uh, the, the window will be much smaller. Um, but uh, the other strategy, the other smart strategy, is not to stop advertising. You know, that's the other intelligent uh, uh, move to make. It's, never, uh, it's not never stop loving, it's never stop advertising. Um, of course, that is only valid if your cash, cash position allows it. If you're now fighting for survival, then, you know, uh, advertising will not save you. So if you're fighting for your survival and you have a cash uh, position, then this is not, uh, this is not, uh, this not applies to you. Uh, but if you have the cash, then being silent is not the best strategy. And if um, you have done good and, and, or, or, or you can't do good uh, or you don't want to good, do good, then and you, you can't stay silent. You need to keep working on your mental availability. Then you can keep, uh, just, uh, keep your advertising up. Um, on the Brand Recovery Series, you'll find the, uh, the interview We've done with Orlando Wood on right brain advertising. Now, Orlando Wood, his company, what his company does is his company is testing every TV commercial uh, that goes on television in the US and in the UK every day. So they know really well what is going on. And so I had this conversation with Orlando on what is working and what is not working. So I, inv I invite you to listen to the interview because Orlando is saying some really interesting uh, things on what, what is working today and what's not working today. Uh, but in general, um, what he sees out of his tests is um, uh, people still uh, uh, appreciate advertising. They still approve advertising. Um, this is from this morning from WARC. Uh, and it's a little bit the, the same message. It's if you look at the left uh, one, um, the percentage of consumers who approve. The dark blue is normal campaigns, not related to COVID-19. The um, light blue is advertising about COVID-19, which is more approved of or more appreciated in different countries. But advertising is still, you know, uh, uh, very much approved of. And it's uh, the same thing for generations and gender and high income and low income. It's a little bit the same thing. The level of approval of, of approvement of advertising, the, the, so the, the dark blue is as before. Nothing changed really over there. But then, of course, the light blue is much more, uh, this is much higher. Um, okay, so this is just to show that, you know, keeping silent is not the best strategy. You need to keep up your mental availability. And, and, and you just need to strengthen your social license to operate. There's two ways to do that, doing good or just advertise. The two are, are valid. Um, now, um, we know that the first thing that we do in a crisis situation, either we do it ourselves or we are asked to do, is to cut budget. It's always the same thing. There's an emergency and then cut budget. And, uh, Sometimes it's like you wonder why it's a reflex and we do it all the time. 
and and there is a massive amount of uh, research that proves that this is not a good thing to do, not the right thing to do if you have the cash for it. And so, um, and more, um, sci sci um, scientists have proven that um, spending during a recession um, strengthens your position and, and has a positive influence on sales. And they have proven that uh, since the first recession in 21, 1921, that is. So if we go back to the Great Depression in 1921 and 1922, uh, this is a piece of research that has uh, been done then. And then, you know, you have the, the index is 100 on sales um, uh, when advertising. So dark blue, it blue is increased advertising. Uh, purple is decreased advertising, 90-20, that's the, the, the index, 100. And then see what happens. If you keep, if you increase your advertising, your sales go up, 91, 92, 21, 22, 23, 24. So if there's, that, that was the first piece of research that showed that if you increase or you keep investing in a recession, then your sales will go up. If you don't believe that, or you think it's way too long ago, then we go to the old crisis in 1973 and 1974. Okay, same thing here. If you look at, so 1972 is 100, then uh, blue is, uh, did not cut in 74 and 75. Light purple is cut in both 74 and 75. Dark purple is, Cut in 75, but not in 74, okay? See what happens. If you didn't cut, your sales went up. If you still don't believe that, then we go to the recession of 90, in the 1980, uh, 1982. Same thing here. Recession starts year, uh, between year two and year three. Blue is did not cut in years three or four. Purple is cut in both uh, years three and four. See what happens, sales go up if you keep investing. If you're still not convinced, then we go to 1991. Um, same thing here, blue is maintained increased spending, purple cut spending. You see what happens if you increase or maintain your spending, then you go up. And we finish with the banking crisis in 2008. There we have more detailed research. Uh, there we see that is uh, that's brand Z. Strong brands recover nine times faster than uh, weaker brands. Okay, so I think it's fair to say that it now has been proven over and over and over again that in times of recession, the best strategy is not to stay silent or to go dark. Um, but if you have the cash for it, that you need to go fight, uh, you know, if you're a, a marketing manager, go fight with your CEO. If you're a CEO, go fight with international. Uh, but make your business plan because you're going to win. It's, it has been proven too many times. And there's a, a very simple reason why that is. And this is, uh, this is Milbert Brown in, in 2018. When, when they looked at the TBCA, which is the Total Brand Communication Awareness, when your total brand communication awareness declines, then of course your total mention of your brand decline, uh, the buy nowadays declines, buy most often declines, first mention uh, uh, declines, total brand awareness declines and trial declines. If you stop advertising or decline your advertising spend, you know, then your brand health met, uh, metrics are hurt. If you keep if you keep your investment flat or increase, then your brand awareness go up, trial goes up, etc. So that's the reason why it's worth If you if we take a look at China, what's happening in China now? Uh, that after four months, spending in China is increasing quickly for a number of sectors, um, and you see spending increase for out of home travel, etc., uh, etc. Et now, if you're in one of those sectors, you know, please make make your business plan. Because when we look at, um, if you have the cash flow and, and if your purchase cycles, uh, that's another, another important one, 
if your purchase cycles allow for it, then please make your business plan and go for them. Go get money because uh, uh, you will win, you know, either by, you know, showing empathy because that will uh, get your feeling score up or, um, uh, or, or just advertising because that will get your metrics up. So it's, it's really very important. The question, of course, is uh, how do I know how much to spend? You know, is that the same budget as before? Well, the metric here is your share of voice versus your share of market. We know the rule is your share of voice should be higher than your share of market, and then you start to grow. Of course, if half of your competition goes silent, goes dark, then the budget to have to keep a, a, a share of voice higher than your share of market is lower than than before the crisis. So. Um, it's important that you, you know, do you do some some benchmarks. One benchmark is, of course, uh, uh, look at what happened in the 2008 crisis, and look at the uh, the the benchmarks there and the investment levels there. Uh, look at your industry, look at your competition, uh, see what which brands uh, went dark, and which brands kept uh, spending and or work from there. By the way, if you don't have your uh, two, uh, 200, uh, 2008 uh, share of voice numbers or uh, investment numbers from your market, from industry or for your competition, uh, uh, shout and then we can help you with that. And then the second question is, you know, uh, I've just showed you plenty of examples that staying silent is not a good strategy that you keep you have to keep investing uh, because that will make you win uh, after the crisis or during the crisis, during the recession. Uh, first question, of course, if you want to do that, how much do I need to spend? That's the share of mind, uh, share of voice, share of mind, share of market uh, rule. Sorry. The second one is, what do I have to say? You know, um, and um, there I refer back to the interview with uh, Orlando Wood because. You know, he knows because he sees in, the day, in his daily tests. So um, uh, what works really well, really well today, is advertising that shows or that talks about betweenness, which is totally normal, um, that, uh, you know, has a scenario and characters, that's storytelling, uh, that is local, about local situations, about local stories, and uh, that is about feeling good. What is not working well is vanity, self-image, performance, and promotions. Yeah. So uh, what I'm basically saying is this is a really good time because green is brand building, red is uh, sales activation. This is a really good time to build, to do brand building because brand building is working on your three Fs. You know? It's working on your three Fs. It's working on your mental availability. It's working on your feeling score and fluency score. And it's also working on your license, uh, social license to operate. Sales activation, I know that once, you know, uh, we go, we start, starting May, we're, we're going to, as we have the reflex now to cut all budgets, in May, we're going to have the reflex to massively go to sales activation. Um, please do not forget that uh, in times of recession, sales activation, and that's another law of marketing, doesn't really work that well. Uh, because in recessions, people want to be comforted. Um, the last recession, the 2008 recession, there was this one brand that did something spectacular with spectacular results. And, and they, they, they could do that because they found the nerve. And that was T-Mobile. T-Mobile at that time, that was the, one of the small uh, mobile, uh, mobile providers. Uh, the three big ones were uh, O2, uh, what is it, O2, Vodafone, and uh, Orange. And then you had a, a number of small ones, Virgin, and T-Bobble was one of them. And that those were the first ones to do a flash. Of course, uh, you can't do that today. But it doesn't matter. Just take a look at the, at the, uh, at the advert. Uh, you will feel it. You will feel uh, that, you know, why that works then so good. And it worked really well because contract sales increased by almost 50% versus the same period in, in 2008. The market increased only 1%. So that's kind of strong for a really small brand to beat the market like that. Market share increase of 6% was the highest increase 
of any of the mobile networks, even the three big ones, and that campaign generated 15 million pounds in increased sales and a return on uh, inv marketing investment of 1.46 uh, pounds. So just to show, you know, uh, in times of re recession, please keep spending if your cash position, position, position allows it, uh, because it will make you win. Uh, the amount of money is uh, defined by your share of voice, share of uh, market balance. Uh, if a lot of your competition goes uh, dark or go, goes silent, uh, your share of voice will be cheaper. So reason the more to invest. Uh, and content-wise, uh, Orlando in his tests have under understands what is working, what is not working. Um, feeling good is now a, a good thing uh, to do. So after doing good, making people feel good is a good thing to do. Okay, now um, why I why are we stressing so hard on not staying silent? Because this thing will take a while. Um, so you have to act now and you have two strategies, you know, feel good advertising or doing good. Um, but you have to plan for longer. Um, of course, everybody wants to understand, um, how the recovery period will look like. So you have those three, uh, uh, scenarios. You have the V scenario, which is a classic economical shock where you have a displacement of output, but growth eventually rebounds. And, and sometimes it goes uh, pretty stark. Um, and how the business review things that in this case, we're gonna, it's most likely that we have, we're gonna have the V. The U is the sort of ugly cousin of the V uh, because you, there's a rebound, but at the end, you know, there's not much more growth. So by the way, the black line is the GDP level and the, the pink line is the GDP growth. Okay, and then you have the L, uh, which is unlikely uh, because uh, this is not a crisis where people stopped voluntarily buying stuff. They had to, so it's different from other crises. Uh, and the L scenario is, it's, uh, it's according to a lot of econom uh, economists, is unlikely. Now, what the Harvard Business Review did is they looked at other uh, epidemics and they looked at the the shape of the rebound and as you can see in the spanish flu h2n2 asian flu uh, hong kong flu and sars uh, we all had um, uh, v-shaped uh, rebounds so uh, that's why harvard business review is saying you know it's a it's a uh, it's an epidemic so it's probably going to be uh, uh, v shape two. The question is, how long will it take? And how the business review is saying two quarters. Um, now, that's very difficult to say. The good news is, if you look at the, this is the Financial time, Times this morning, if you look at SP 500 this year, then you see it's indeed a sort of V shaped uh, recovery process. Uh, but then you know, it will it keep like that. We don't know. But anyway, so two quarters, V-shaped. Let's say it's V-shaped and let's say it's two quarters. Uh, it might be a little bit longer because there's a, f a number of uh, factors that can influence that. One is new local outbreaks. We know that they are highly likely because we, we, have, we lack the herd immunity. So it's going to happen. Uh, and, and so if we can manage local outbreaks, well, then, you know, the effect on the eco economy will be limited. If a local outbreak becomes national, then we're deep, 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 uh, I'm going to say shit, uh, deep uh, trouble. Um, the, the other thing is the level of local acceptance of the phase exit strategy, because it's going to include, if we like it or don't, it's going to include testing, mass testing and tracking. So the little app that will warn us if we have been in the vicinity of somebody who is infected. Uh, and the level of acceptance, uh, the local acceptance will define how uh, successful we will or not manage the local outbreaks. And then uh, uh, another thing that will influence the, the two quarters or more is 
uh, the the when the vaccine will uh, arrive and when we, when we will the time we need to get back to normal uh, will depend on the start of the mass uh, vaccinations. An interesting thought is uh, or question is now uh, will because we are in this planetary uh, behavioral change experiment um, all the changes that we now you know have in our behavior some will go away. I mean, a lot of my friends are, it's like everyone, uh, every friend I have is doing sports now. Uh, I'm sure that none all of my friends will keep doing sports after uh, this crisis. Um, but some changes will become per permanent and, and, and some changes might, you know, influence the perception that we have of brands, uh, brands and products. For example, luxury, luxury goods. Now is a time for humility so i'm not sure that you know luxury goods if you if you want to uh, uh, focus on the showing off element maybe it's not the, a good time to stress that maybe you know you want to think about positioning on on the quality of the product or or the process or etc cetera, etc cetera. more than just a showing off because i don't think showing off will be appropriate for a few for the next few months anyway so um but it's it's uh, you you need to think about that. You need to think about what are uh, in what's happening now. What uh, um, um, what changes will stick and will become permanent. Um, that is, by the way, the subject or of our the focus of our next webinar, which is April sixteen next week at eleven o'clock, same same hour. Um, there's already two articles on this uh, on the uh, on the website. Uh, the first one is called now is a good time to think about your brand's positioning and the other one is uh, an article from fred that says help people help themselves so it's on the on on the blog all right but before um i'm gonna end i want to uh, uh go back to the uh the five things i wanted to share in this presentation the first one is uh consumers want uh, you to step in and this is really the first time that this uh, happened. That it didn't happen in the banking crisis. It didn't happen in the all, all the other crash, crises that I mentioned. Uh, this is really the first time. It's part of a way, way bigger trend. Uh, as I explained, it's political, it's economical, uh, but it's also about sustainability and the next phase of marketing we're in. So it's a, it's a bigger thing. Um, now, responding to that, you can decide to keep silent and, and, and not answer it. As I showed you, it's not the most intelligent uh, strategy uh, to follow um, because responding to it will keep your mental availability up and that will give you a stronger position once the recession starts and it will strengthen your social license to operate. Both are good because both will um, uh, influence your sales positively in the recession. Uh, now, a social license to operate, I talked about the three Fs. Uh, social license to operate now it's it's uh, it's a really good time uh, it's better now than before and after to build your uh, trust and your legitimacy because the things you do now are getting noticed and are appreciated more than 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 before so now is a good time it will influence three it will influence your sales positively as i've showed you um, and then do good is is one strategy just advertise as the other one uh, as long as you're not keeping silent. But uh, I think the window of opportunity for doing good is closing a little bit. And the window, window of opportunity to do stuff like T-Mobile, basically making people feel good with your product, uh, with your product, with your brand building, uh, that window of opportunity, opportunity is open. Uh, anyway, whatever you want to do, you have to act now, but you also have a plan for, for an, at least six months. Uh, uh, and you have to focus on what you're going, what are you going to say? Because no brand can uh, stay silent for six months. It's simply, it's simply not uh, possible. Uh, and then I want to end with this one. Um, how do you decide now um, 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 what you want to say? So as 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 we now keep, uh, as we now need to wash our hands, you, brands need to keep talking. You can prioritize for impact impact on your socialized to operate, impact on your three Fs, 
and now uh, the, the the thing the, the thing that has most impact as we have seen in the work data is doing good inform people about what you're doing on COVID-19 so doing good has now has now the most impact that window of opportunity is closing a little bit the second one is um, advertising if it's making people feel good uh, I showed you the results of the of the testing of uh, Rolando Wood and, and System 1. And please, whatever you do, and this is really, I didn't go into that much, but it's really very important. I know as a reflex is now, we're gonna cut budget, they're in, add, add, uh, uh, starting May, the reflex will be, oh, we need to go sales activation. Please not only go short, also think about the long, because as it has been proven over and over and over again, that um, keeping your advertising spend up in a recession uh, uh, makes you stronger coming out of the recession, it, it, it makes your sales going up. Uh, same thing here. Uh, we have two tactics, brand building and sales activation. We have to combine the two because if you choose just one of the two, uh, you're, you're not investing the most effective way. Okay, so that's it for now. Let me take a look. We have six more minutes. Um, so, uh, this was the first deep dive. Uh, we still have part two, part three, and part four as a webinar, and we have plenty of articles to share and interviews to share on the blog. So, uh, next appointment is next uh, Thursday, a week from now, at 11 o'clock, and then uh, we will uh, let you know the details. So, um, Thank you very much. Let me quickly see if there if there are any questions. Uh, if I'm correct, there are no questions. Okay, cool. So if there are no questions, then um, I thank you a lot for your time. And hopefully, hopefully, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something blinking all of a sudden. Okay, that was not a question. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for your time and hopefully we can, uh, we can talk again uh, next week. Bye-bye.